Hi, I'm John Villalobo, Senior Applications Engineer here at RKI Instruments, and welcome to our channel. Today, I want to show you how to remove and clean and replace the PID lamp in the GX6000. I've already removed the rubber boot and the tapered red nozzle from the top of the unit. And we'll start by turning the unit over and removing the battery pack. It's going to release that spring clip and remove the battery pack like so. And then we're also going to take a small Phillips screwdriver and release, remove the four screws, one in each corner. I've already done that. So I'm going to lift off the pack and that exposes the sensor and gasket and filters. We want to carefully remove the gasket, and uh, I mean careful so that we don't send the little filters flying. So I'm gonna put my finger actually over the filters and just kind of gently, uh, one filter came loose, that's all right. And we'll just gently pry up on this. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put that, off, put that off to the side. And uh, we have two PIDs in the left chambers of the unit. I'm going to clean the blue one here. So I'm going to take off, remove, pull straight up, remove that PID. I'm going to remove the unit out of the way for the moment. And now we have the PID removed from the GX6000 and we're ready to take the top part of that off of the body. I have the cleaning kit available, and uh, from that kit, I now have the PID removal tool, and we've got tabs on each leg of that tool. The kit also consists of cotton swabs, a small vial of aluminum oxide powder, and finger cots to prevent getting your body oils onto the surface of the lamp, which would contaminate it. So I'm wearing gloves in place of the finger cots as I just find them more comfortable. Basically, I want to put the tabs of uh, the PID removal tool into slots in the top of the body of the unit and squeeze those tabs together. But I'm going to put my finger in place just to make sure that that top cap doesn't pop off. Okay, if you don't do that, sometimes it could go flying as there is a little spring in there. And now we have the lamp and the electrode stack. So I'm going to basically pull the lamp out of the electrode stack and we want to clean the flat surface of this lamp with a cotton swab dipped into the aluminum oxide powder. Once we've got some powder on the swab, we're going to rub that flat surface of the lamp until we feel a little grittiness resistance. And in some cases, you may also hear a little bit of a squeakiness. Once you've achieved that, use the other clean end of that cotton swab and use as many swabs as necessary. Make sure you get all of the excess powder off of that lamp. Once that's done, we want to return that back to the electrode stack, making sure that it's seated firmly into the base and is nice and straight, like so. And then we're going to return that back to the PID body. and I've lined up the shape of the electrode stack with the uh, contour of the top of the cap of the body and everything just fits nice and flush and we're ready to replace the PID back into the GX6000. Now we're ready to put the PID back into the GX6000. We can see that uh, the base of the PID has a female uh, connector and also some keyed holes that fit to pins in the base of the GX6000. So basically it only goes in one way and uh, you can kind of move it back and forth until it seats firmly. And uh, at this point, we're ready to put the sensor gasket cover back on. And that goes like so. Make sure everything is nice and flush. 
and fits snugly over the centers. There are little tabs that help retain the gasket. You can also use a small flat blade screwdriver to tuck the rubber beneath those tabs and get a better purchase on that. And now we can put the cover back on. And just uh, secure those screws with your small Phillips screwdriver. And the battery pack back into place. Push the tab over to the right and let that claw go back into its slot, securing the battery to the unit. And now we're ready to put the rubber boot back onto the unit and uh, the rubber nozzle back onto the top of the inlet fitting. And then we can begin using the GX6000.